Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Friday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time and also our first Friday for the month. Let us welcome Christ in the person of our presiding priest, Reverend Father Ting Mishano, SDB, Parochial Vicar. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be God, who renews us in His Son, Jesus Christ. May His grace and peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Let us pause for a while and examine ourselves and realize our sins. Let us humbly ask God's forgiveness. For the times... We have allowed greed and covetousness to rule our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we have allowed lustful cravings to darken the vision of our life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times we have allowed selfishness to destroy our good relationship with our neighbor. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us, may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that fount of heavenly gifts through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen a reading from the first letter of saint paul to the corinthians Brothers and sisters, thus should one regard us, servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now it is of course required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. It does not concern me in the least that I be judged by you or any human tribunal. I do not even pass judgment on myself. I am not conscious of anything against me, but I do not thereby stand acquitted. The one who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the Lord comes, for he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our hearts and then everyone will receive praise from god the word of the lord thanks be to god 
The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and He will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in Him, and He will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful ones. Criminals are destroyed and the posterity of the wicked is cut off. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, the disciples of John the Baptist, fast often and offer prayers. And the disciples of the Pharisees do the same. But yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, <coughs> then, <coughs> then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. <coughs> Otherwise, he will tear the new, and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wine skins. And no one who has been drinking old wine desires new for he says, the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says some important lessons in our Gospel, that there are actually two lessons here. The first one is about fasting. And the second one is the combination of the new and the old. Now we must understand these two things. <clears throat> First of all, the practice of fasting, which we are not familiar no, with fasting, is very important for the Jews at that time. No? 
Because fasting for them is not only about health. So, al alam natin ang fasting, kalimitan, may kinalaman sa ating kalusugan. Pero for the Jews, it has something to do with their religion. They fast, it is an act of the Jews so that God will do something. No? Di ba ganun yung mga bata? Para may gustong hilingin sa magulang, may gagawin sila. Maging mabait, maglilinis ng kwarto, susunod, para kasi may hihilingin sila eh. May hihingin, ganun, no? That's the fasting for the Jews. They fast, they don't, and especially, they don't drink wine. Huh? That's a, a, a very important fasting for them. Because they want the Messiah to come. They fast, they do this, so that God will do what? He will send the Messiah. No? That is the purpose for their fasting. That's why, when they saw Jesus and his disciples not fasting, they thought, don't you want the Messiah to come? That's their idea, because that's the purpose of fasting. But Jesus was correct when he said, how can we fast? The Messiah is already here. I am already here, so we don't fast. We will fast when the bridegroom, which is the Messiah, Jesus, will be taken away, meaning to say, during the Passion. He will die. For three days, he will be buried. But on the third day, he will rise again. That's the only time that the disciples will fast. So that is the explanation of Jesus. And so he gave a, a parable because that fasting of the Jews is the mentality that is their tradition, their Old Testament tradition. But Jesus is bringing something new. So, the old mentality, now that there is something new, cannot mix. You have to accept the new reality that the Messiah is already here. So, he gave the parable. When you have a cloth that is old and, and, and it's destroyed or there is a tear, you will not get the new cloth and patch it to the old one. It will not match. And, yeah, it will not match. It will tear. It will even destroy the old one. And he said also that new wine cannot be put into old wine skins. It will destroy the old one. Old wine skins. So, Jesus is telling here the newness of life, the newness of tradition, the newness of mentality that he brings because he is the bridegroom. He is the Messiah. He is not saying, forget about the old. He is referring to the te Old Testament. Forget, he is not saying that. Forget about it. I'm, no. He just says that because I am new, accept me now. The old has already done its part to prepare for the coming. And now that I am here, accept me. This is the new reality. And I think in the first reading, that is what St. Paul was saying to the Corinthians. Because for the Corinthians, they accepted the good news from Paul, but they wanted also other ideas from philosophy, from Greek culture, and so on, to mix with the, the gospel, with the message of Paul. And Paul said, no, it cannot be. You cannot change already what is given to you. That's the meaning when he said, we are just servants and stewards of the mysteries of God. As servants and stewards, you cannot change anything from what the master has given you. You will just have to, to follow it, to preserve it, and so on. Because in the end, we will be judged by God. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of the hearts and everyone will receive praise from God. So that is the, the reminder of Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is the bridegroom promised by the Old Testament. 
let us accept him. Renewed in the spirit by the new wine of the gospel, let us confidently present to the Lord the needs and intentions of the church and our own. Lord, in your great love, answer us. Lord, in, Lord, your, in great your great love, love answer, answer us. us. For the Catholic Church, the new people of God, may she be a powerful agent of renewal in a world distilled characterized by the vices and defects of old. Let us pray. Lord, in your great love, answer us. For the Holy Father, our Bishop, our parish priest, and all the members of religious congregations, may they spearhead the renewal of our communities through their faithfulness to the gospel. Let us pray. Lord, in your great love, answer us. For our government and local officials, may they bravely uproot all forms of corruption and inefficiency and promote the renewal of society through honesty, dedication, and genuine patriotism. Let us pray. Lord, in your great love, answer us. For the poor who have been victimized by the losses caused by the coronavirus, may the solidarity of the Christian community enable them to experience the renewing power of God's love. Let us pray. Lord, in your great love, answer us. For our youth who are so eager to renew our society, may they keep in mind that every authentic and lasting renewal has to be rooted in the love of God and neighbor. Let us pray. Lord, in your great love, answer us. For all the devotees of the Sacred Heart, and especially ourselves. May our love for Jesus bear fruits of generosity, purity, and commitment to protect the environment from any form of degradation. Let us pray. Lord, in your great love, answer us. Lord Jesus, you are the source of new life in the church and all mankind. Renew us in our thoughts and our hearts that everything we do may mirror the inexhaustible newness of God. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread. We offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, O Lord, we pray, on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, 
that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that one over to the open heart of the Savior all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. <clears throat> By sending down your spirit, upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Aventura, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, our country, 
our communities, and all our families from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days and by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, <clears throat> Jesus our Savior. <clears throat> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. One of the soldiers opened his side with a lance, and at once there came forth blood and water. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oratio Imparata on COVID-19 God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cure for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. 
we implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, Pray for us. Saint Rock, Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Please all kneel for the Novena Prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Divine Jesus, you have said, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Behold me kneeling at your feet, filled with a lively faith and confidence in the promises dictated by your Sacred Heart and pronounced by your adorable lips, we come to ask this favor. To whom can we turn if not to you, whose heart is the source of all graces and merits? Where should we seek if not in the treasure which contains all the riches of your kindness and mercy? Where should we knock if not at the door through which God gives himself to us and through which we go to God? We have recourse to you, heart of Jesus. In you we find consolation when afflicted, protection when persecuted, strength when burdened with trials, and light in doubt and darkness. Dear Dishus, we firmly believe that you can grant us the grace we implore, even though it should require a miracle. You have only to will it and our prayers will be granted. We admit that we are most unworthy of your favors, but this is not a reason for us to be discouraged. You are the God of mercy and you will not refuse a contrite heart. Cast upon us a look of mercy, we beg of you, and your kind heart will find in our miseries and weaknesses a reason for granting our prayers. O Sacred Heart, whatever may be our decision with regard to our request, we will never stop adoring, loving, praising, and serving you. Our Jesus, be pleased to accept this, our act of perfect resignation, to the, to the degrees of your adorable, adorable heart, heart, which we sincerely desire, desire may be fulfilled, fulfilled in and, in by, and us, by us and by, by all your creatures forever. Sacred Heart of Jesus, we know we that know there is, that there but, is one but one thing impossible to you, to be without pity for those who are suffering or in distress. Look upon us, we beg of you, dear Jesus, dear Jesus and grant, grant us the grace for which we humbly implore you. Through, through the Immaculate Heart of your, of your Most Sorrowful Mother, you have entrusted us to her as her children, and her prayers are all-powerful with you. Amen. Let us pray. Please rise. May the sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see and love him in our neighbor 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the sacred heart of Jesus heal your memories and hurts of the past and make you enjoy the freshness of his love. Amen. May he make you instruments of renewal in your families and your communities through your dedication and faith faithfulness to God's law. Amen. May he cleanse your hearts so that you may be a new creation in God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Go in the peace of Christ to renew the world with his love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor.